Hi my friends, today I wanted to sit down and tell you 10 important things and life-changing things I've learned during the past year. Being depressed during COVID was tough and although I'm still struggling to recover, I've learned a lot of things along the way and I felt it was important to share them. This might sound obvious for some of you, but for me, I guess I didn't really fully grasp the concept of making choices. When you reach your 20s, your early 20s, and I'm sure even your late 20s, and you discover a lot of things about yourself, about your life, you're kind of all over the place. It's hard to make choices, at least for me it was. Talking with people who are older and people I fully trust, I understood that it is so deeply important and part of being older to actually make choices. Life is the sum of all the choices that you've made. That is what your life reflects. I have had a really difficult time applying this to my life in regards to what I want. I understood that I can think about these things, but as long as I don't actually make the choice to do them, I won't actually move forward. I think I had a really hard time making decisions so far because I had a really difficult time accepting that any choice I make has good sides and bad sides, advantages and disadvantages. I don't like to reduce things to good and bad, but kind of reduces to this. Any choice you make, there is going to be upsides and downsides. And I guess my mind being quite anxious and perfectionist had a really hard time understanding that. And I'm still struggling with this, don't get me wrong. But at least I've understood this. I don't wanna make videos only of things I've like mastered and applied to my life. The point of this channel is to, to distance myself from my perfectionist tendencies and to be vulnerable and to have vulnerable conversations. So importance of making choices is huge and it's going to help you. At the end of the day, we don't have another choice but to make a choice for ourselves, taking into account the things that are going to be cool about the choice that we make and the things that are going to be harder about that choice. And I guess it's about focusing on the good sides. For example, I want to make YouTube videos. I've always known that and I'm finally making the choice to do it. Is it easy for me? No. Is my anxious mind allowed? Yes. What are the benefits? I'm here finally doing what I've always wanted to do and making my dream come true and saying it out loud and filming and feeling amazing as I film. What are the sides of it that I don't really like? I actually don't like being a public person. It's not that I don't like it, it's that I fear it. And I'm putting myself out there. With that can come some negative aspects to it. But as person who wants to make YouTube videos, I need to understand that this is part of the of the choice that I'm making. Now what I choose to focus on and what I give power to, that's another story. But at least I've accepted that with any choice, there are advantages and disadvantages. You need to focus on the advantages or at least not let the disadvantages overrule everything. This is probably one of the most important lessons I've understood this year. The importance of habits that you stick to no matter what. Some days I am really good at keeping up with my healthy habits and other days I'm not even managing to get out of bed or brush my teeth. So still struggling, but overall huge, huge improvement. If I look back on my life, I'm kind of like an all or, all or nothing person, so I will overly invest in something or I won't do anything and procrastinate out of anxiety. What I've understood now is that first of all, I need to have a set routine for myself. I need to have at least a set routine when I wake up and a set routine before I go to bed. This actually calms me down and forces me to actually do what's right for me, independent from my mood. I know this might seem maybe obvious to some of you, but for those people who are struggling with depression or anxiety or any other thing that is difficult to handle, the, the daily things of life, the mundane things of life become really difficult to do for some of us. As an anxious person, with my emotions fluctuating all the time, when it comes to habits, I need to get up, have breakfast, make my bed, wash my face, brush my teeth, get dressed, no matter 
how I feel, I need to take a shower. No matter what I feel, I need to have three meals every day. No matter what I feel, I need to brush my teeth again at night, to wash my face, to wear my pajamas, to get in bed, to put my phone away and not check social media, to go to bed feeling accomplished, feeling like at least, if even if I did nothing all day, I, I did the right thing for me. Having healthy habits is actually an act of self-love. It's an act of self-dignity, an act of self-respect. You are choosing to respect your body and to respect yourself no matter what you are feeling. And although it's hard, I really think this is life-changing. I'll make another video regarding habits, but all in all, two things that have helped me with keeping track of my habits. One, a habit tracker. So it's a notebook. I write the habits that I want to have and every day I put take things off as I do them. And the other thing is implementing small, tiny, tiny changes to my habit. Not going from like one day doing nothing to the next day doing everything that I want to have as a healthy habit. If for example, you can make your bed for an entire week, that is a huge win. Habits, 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 life-changing. I'm a person who is super people oriented. I have a lot of empathy and compassion. I'm always like super influenced and affected by people. Although it gets tiring on the daily, I think it's a strength when you learn to master it in a way and accept that that's who you are. But when you're a person that's oriented towards people and who doesn't not who is not naturally willing or able to think of you first, one thing I've understood this year is that truly at the end of the day life is about you understanding that in the end the choices that i make habits that i have things i do in my life I need to do them first and foremost for me choices that i make although they might affect other people i need to to think of me first i don't mean that in a selfish way i will always consider other people but what i mean is understanding that at the end of the day you're between you and you. Even if you're sitting next to someone, even if you're sleeping next to someone, you are between you and you. And so the choices that you make, you need to be okay with them deep inside in your own body because it is not sustainable if your choice that you if the choice that you made doesn't come from you. It comes from making someone else happy or making other people happy. I don't think that's sustainable. Anything that you decide to do, you need to do it first and foremost for you. You can decide to share it, you can decide to keep it for yourself, but always your initial standpoint has to be you. It might sound obvious for people who are naturally like this, but for some of us, it's not the case. And that is really something helpful to, to understand for you first. One of my favorites, growth and the process of growth. For example, I'm currently healing a life-changing moment in my life where I'm really being brutally honest with myself about my strengths and my weaknesses, my helpful and unhelpful habits, the things I love about myself, the things that I want to work on and improve. And let me tell you, this process is so deeply messy. I mean, just look at my recovery from depression. Some days I wake up and I feel like I'm at the top of the world, I can do anything. And other days, for no reason, I just wake up and I literally can't get out of bed. I can't. Some days I'll do something and feel so proud of it. Other days I'll do something even bigger and I won't feel good. Growth can feel lonely. Well, I know that I have issues about me that I need to focus on and to do that I need to be centered and focused on me. It can feel kind of lonely, especially when you spent your life thinking or unconsciously having, you know, this idea that having a partner will fix things. I don't think that's true and I really think that I need to do a lot of work on myself, for myself, and also to build healthier relationships. It is not easy for the ego. Your mind can get quite loud. The process of anything it goes like this. I mean, it doesn't even go like this. It goes like, sorry, it goes like this. Process of anything is long. 
It is not a straight line and it takes a lot of time. Things take time. You know, we live in a society where things are constantly changing. We feel like people get to do amazing things at such young ages and things are moving forward for everyone and so fast and we're just so overly stimulated. And I think that it's important to remind people that actually things take so much time, especially things that are deep, things that are trenched within you and that you need to, to really get out and really evaluate. and. Things take time. Every choice you make will take time. And in a society where everything goes by so fast, I wanna remind myself and you, of course, that things take time. So take your time. My complicated relationship with social media. Before this year, I had a typical relationship with social media where I would take selfies just because I wanted a few likes even though I would never admit it and just feel better about myself. I would share the parties that I was at and I would share, I was just like sharing my personal life on social media. And last year when I started being depressed, I actually deleted my social media for two months and when I tell you I spent the best summer of my life, I mean it. Now I know I, I need social media for my professional projects and I know that there are some things that are absolutely amazing about it and it's all in how you use it. But for example, Instagram, now that I've taken some distance from it, I've understood that I just don't want to partake in that culture of sharing my personal life in a way that feels artificial and in a way that feels edited. What I love about YouTube and TikTok is that, um, and don't get me wrong, I was one of those people that was like, I will never use TikTok, and now I'm absolutely in love with it. I think it just gives me, I have a good time whenever I'm on TikTok, and I don't know if it's because of the people that I follow and the, the like, the algorithm, my algorithm, but my TikTok is an amazing space for me, and I love it. And on YouTube and TikTok, um, the format allows me to be myself, to share things that matter to me, to play around with visuals, things that I like. On Instagram, that is not the case. On Instagram, I absolutely hate it. I still have to use it for professional purposes, for other projects, but basically, if I could, I would delete Instagram. And it's something I think about every day. I wanna be present. If I choose to take pictures, I wanna take them for me. If I choose to share these pictures, I wanna share them because of with a message behind it. I wanna share it because I want to. I don't wanna share things because I have to because that will get me more attention, that will get me more likes. That is not, not my goal anymore. I'm still navigating my relationship with social media. I know that I need to accept, again, acceptance. I need to accept that um, no matter how much I want to, I will never be able to be fully myself on social media because it is a platform where you share one specific moment that's usually edited. Social media is still quite a complicated relationship. Now, I love photography. I love I love posing. I love videography. I'm in love with digital art and I will continue partaking in social media because it does help me explore and share my digital art. But this apart, I will not be partaking in this culture of posing and finding the right angle of me being at the beach that in no way reflects my experience being at the beach. You know what I mean? If one day I have the opportunity to model, that's something I've always wanted to try. And if one day that happens, I'll do it because that's an experience. But I don't want to just go somewhere. And then when I'm there, I need to take a moment of the party, even though I'm bored. I need to film the moment of the party where it looks like I'm having a lot of fun. And I need to do this to send this person a passive aggressive message. Like that's just not for me anymore. I hate it. If you like it, honestly, good for you. I'm not gonna judge you. It's such a complicated world we live in and there's enough hate out there. I am not gonna hate on you ever. But for me, nope. This one, I love it. I love it. Less is more. What I mean is less is more in all aspects of your life. I am understanding that we are so overly stimulated and everything. I'm increasingly interested in minimalism, not in its extreme forms, but 
and the idea behind it. I want to obviously get more informed and educated about it, but I don't want to be so overly stimulated. So even with my laptop, I'm kind of organizing it and deleting things that I don't use anymore. I just want my laptop to be less cluttered, you know? I also don't want to be so overly stimulated, again, by being more present, by not sharing things, by not being on my phone mindlessly scrolling, by being present as I experience something, by sorting out my clothes. You know, there are certain items I literally have had them for years. I don't wear them. I want to donate them. I could even sell them and make some money. Who knows? I just want to like seriously i want to slow down and i want i want to like reduce the amount of things that i have i want to reduce the amount of things that i watch i just want to calm down because at the end of the day yes it's amazing but it's also exhausting if you can find ways to feel less overwhelmed by the amount of of things that we're stimulated by constantly i really think it helps well it helps me hopefully it helps you too I used to really take things personally. I almost felt like people were out to get me. I didn't almost feel that I felt that, that people were basically out to get me. Being um, depressed has really, really humbled me down in the sense that I've understood that everyone is struggling. Everyone has deep issues. Some people choose to work on them, some people choose to avoid them, some people choose to, you know, distract themselves from it, some people choose to hurt, some people... So many different um, reactions to what we're dealing with, but everyone is struggling with something. People are complex and people are struggling. And their lives are messy just the way your life is messy. And their thoughts are messy and their feelings are messy just like yours. So what I've understood is to not take things personally, kind of understand that everyone is doing their own thing, everyone is struggling in their own way, and that it's important to understand that, to understand that people do things because of their own issues, because of their own experiences, because of their own strength and their own weaknesses. They're not doing things against you, and even if someone is supposedly doing something against you, that person is actually doing this because uh, of their own struggles. That is the truth. We all have different capacities to do, to handle different things that happen to us. Two say two different people may handle the same event very differently, and we're honestly all trying in our own ways. Don't judge someone's reaction to something, even if it hurts you, because everyone is trying their best, even if their best is definitely not the best thing to do but people do what they can and at the end of the day it's really kind of a stress relief for me to understand that i'm not going to take this personally this has nothing to do with me this has to do with this person and i'm choosing to be a better version of myself that's how i'm dealing with my things everyone is trying and everyone is doing what they are capable to do in that moment so don't take it so personally if, if someone's reaction irritates you in a way because even something that the person says is against you is not against you it's about them the importance of balance i swear if i could i would like paint the word balance on my wall balance is everything i was the definition of the person that was always going from one extreme to another i didn't want to do something or i spent Oh, 24 hours doing it. I'm the kind of person that went from being busy from 7 a.m. to midnight to the person being stuck in bed, able to do nothing. But this year I've understood something. It is the importance of balance, importance of doing something, taking a break, focusing on something else, coming back to it, having a little social moment, taking some time for you, working on your things having a life outside of your things, having a career, having friends, having your alone time, having your time to clean your house, having the time to read your book. You don't have to spend every ounce of energy you have in you in order to accomplish th something. Now, what I aim to do as I refunction in life is to be balanced about everything, to have a date 
that is balanced by all the things that matter to me. Even when I decide to do something like sort out my laptop, I can do that for an entire day. But that's not healthy. Even when I get fed up, I'll continue. That's not healthy. And something that really helps with this is to set uh, a time. So for example, two hours I'm going to do this and then no matter where I am at, I'm going to put this next to me, leave it behind and do something else. As an anxious person and as an avoidant person, my mind is the kind of mind where I'll do something and then my thoughts will get so loud that I will stop because it's exhausting having these thoughts and I'd rather do nothing and not have these thoughts. I've accepted um, that this is my reality, but I've also understood that the most frustrating thing in my life is that I know what I want, exactly what I want. I know that I have the potential to do it and because of my thoughts, I end up doing nothing and I end up feeling horrible. What I've understood now is that I want that in order to know if you like something, to actually do it. That is the only way to know whether you like it or not. I want to make YouTube videos. Well, I need to make YouTube videos if I want if I want to know whether I like it or not. I don't know if I like my hair curly or straight. Well, I need to have it curly and I need to have it straight in order to know which one I like most. What I'm trying to tell you is that we need to actually do things action-wise in order to know whether we like our ideas or not. When you're very anxious, it's hard. It's hard because your thoughts are there and they're, and they're loud. And so it's hard to be like, okay, now I'm gonna do it because your thoughts are like, no, 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 don't do it, don't do it. This is such a bad idea. You're gonna ruin everything. They're gonna make fun of you. Go back and do nothing. That is your only way to feel good. No, unfortunately, that is not true. So with your mind talking, all you need to do is to do it and let your, let your thoughts be, let them be there. Don't like struggle to make them stop. Try. But that's what you need to do. You need to try. Try, 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 try it, try it, try it. Don't overthink it, just do it. And remember, always remember, things take time. Things take time. I'm allowed to take my time because things take time and things are messy. It's not a straight line. Just think of me doing this whenever you feel like people have it going like this and you it's like this. Well, reality is it's like this. Okay, guys, I love you. I hope you enjoyed watching this video. There are so many other things I've understood and I might make a second video. I also want to hear what you have to say. So thank you guys and I wish you all a great night. Or day. A great day.